Good morning, everybody. Welcome to St Mark's this morning. It's lovely to have you here. <laughs> lovely to have you at home as well, watching along. Welcome. Well, the sun was out yesterday morning. It might be a little bit chilly in here this morning, but the sun was out yesterday morning, reminding us that spring is coming, the flowers are blooming, and God is good. Whether it's been a fantastic week for you, or a tough one, fulfilling or disappointing, whether you've been your best self, living your best life, or just trudging along, God is good. We know this because we have the evidence in here, over and over, God is good. Reading from Deuteronomy chapter seven. But it was because the Lord loved you and kept the oath he swore to your ancestors that he brought you out of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord your God is good, he is a faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. Just one of the 10,000 reasons to thank and praise our Lord this morning. So please join me as we sing together. Thank you.
And the Lord has drawn us all together this morning that we can do just that. Do it in a way that we can't do it necessarily in your own kitchen or lounge room, even though you may sing to him at home around the house or pray when you're sitting in your bed or in the shower or wherever you might like to sing to the Lord or speak to the Lord. But he also encourages us to gather as we have this morning. And so we take the opportunity to praise his name together. Let's continue to do that as we sing. Oh, praise the name. my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. His body bound and drenched in tears they laid him down in Joseph's tomb the entrance sealed by heavy stone Messiah still and all alone We praise you for creating this awesome world and we praise you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. Please take a seat. So one truth which I think we can all identify with is that life is never smooth sailing. There are always bumps and roadblocks, challenges and issues along the way. One thing I often tell my kids when they come across blocks or challenges is to step back Work it out and step by step we can probably find a solution. And often we can. I had a great win this week. I fixed a tap 
Now, this is many months in the making. We had this leaking tap at home. It took me a long time to work it out. I had to figure out what part I needed, order the parts, wait for the parts to be delivered, go to Bunnings, not once, but twice, because you never remember everything when you go to Bunnings, to get the right tools, three attempts, finally, I did it, fixed the leaking tap. It was very exciting. <laughs> Thank you, I was very proud. Humanity, throughout history, has been able to solve many problems even bigger than leaking taps. Diseases have been eradicated, electricity invented, microscopes, telescopes, I could go on. There's a Dutch uh, bike manufacturer called Van Moof who were faced with a problem in their, um, in their business. 25% of their bikes were getting damaged in transit. Their solution, on the big cardboard boxes that the bikes used to get transported in, they put a picture of a television. And that made the couriers more careful <laughs> when they were carrying the, their cycling, their, their bikes in the box. So they were very clever about it. And their breakage dropped by 80%. So humans can be very clever, but can we solve all our problems? More on that later when Dave preaches to us from Mark. But before we move on, I'm going to invite one of the problem solvers we have in our congregation up to the microphone, Laval, come and join us. It's always nice to hear a little bit more about what people do during the week when they're not at church on Sundays. So Laval, my first question to you is what will you be doing this time tomorrow? Oh, this time tomorrow, so now it's about nine o'clock, I'll be holding a staff meeting and we'll go over some of the projects that we have. And uh, I've been in the aircraft industry for 35 years and um, I run the team of um, great problem solvers. Some um, modification of aircraft to acquisition of new aircraft, flying from various parts of the world and uh, certifying them for Australian uh, environment for usage by our Air Force and Army and Navy. Yeah. That sounds very interesting. I'm glad there's people like you that know what to do in that situation. So one of your other roles is that you're a warden here at St Mark's. Would you like to give us a little brief summary of some of the things that that involves? Oh, that other full-time job. <laughs> um, yeah, so after work, um, drop my pen, have a bite, and then get on the computer, answer emails. And some of the um, experiences as a warden is how rewarding it is. It is rewarding, first of all, you are connected with people. You get to know uh, the staff a bit more, uh, especially in the last two years. Uh, we've been going through, you know, being isolated at home. We've been connected somehow, and that kept me going. Uh, apart from work, there, there has been connection with church. Um, so the support, supporting the staff, supporting our volunteers as well, the provision of the building, the facilities, repairs, maintenance, and uh, even sometimes uh, when you, you think... Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's working, it's working. I'm just filling with this just to let you know that uh, we, we are in control here. Wardens, <laughs> wardens have an input. And it's not without your support. Uh, when we call on volunteers to help, uh, people do come and help. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for all your, the work you do for St Mark's. And my final question, Laval, this morning is, if you had a magic wand, what problem in the world would you fix? Oh, well, it's very topical. Um, everybody has heard of climate change, and the aircraft industry is no, it's not immune to it. We are always looking at various ways of using new materials, materials that are more environment friendly, but unfortunately, a lot of these materials do, at the moment, use a lot of energy. Um, for example, even carbon fiber these days, uh, we make them, we use a lot of energy. The autoclave that's, that's used to, to produce them use a lot of energy. There's a lot of wastage as well. So if I had a magic wand, it would be to reduce waste and you, you re recycle a lot of the waste um, for, for our future generation, for our, our younger people. Yeah, because uh, I have this in mind to, to help, especially the uh, transport industry. Recently I traveled to London, um, 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 just came back about two, two, two weeks ago. I'm amazed that we still take about 20, 23, 24 hours to, to go to London from Melbourne. I wish we were able to just transport ourselves as in Star Trek. <laughs> Beam me up, Scotty, I'll be there and be back. Yeah. Thank you so much, Laval. 
I'm going to say a quick prayer. Dear Father, we thank you so much for Laval and the other wardens um, and all our, our whole community here at St Mark's. We thank you that you've blessed us with many people who are, are willing to serve you in this way. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks so much. Uh, there's lots going on at St Mark's. Trevor, have you got a few notices for us? Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good to see you here, and it's good to be here. Um, for those of you who don't know me, it's about time we got to know each other. Um, I've been at this church myself as a parishioner now for three and a half, four years, and I have the privilege of also being a retired Anglican minister, which means when there's a need to uh, fill in a hole somewhere, I occasionally do it, and I've been thrilled to be asked to help uh, just steer the ship for a while here at St. Mark's uh, after Greg's leaving. So thank you for your prayers and support in that. I know quite a few of you have said you are praying for me and for others in the process, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, notices this week are not startlingly different to any other week. Um, if you're not yet receiving information about our St. Mark's weekly activities, it could be that you're not on our, our regular communication list. And one way of getting on that list is to scan the QR code. And you can see it there. You can also do it. Uh, there's a, a copy of it at the back or online for that matter. And that way yeah, you'll be uh, able to receive information as it comes out each week. And we'll also have a way of uh, just keeping in touch. So please feel free to do that. Um, now, one of the items coming up is... Oh, that's the next item announcement, is it? The prayer meeting. Okay. The prayer meeting that we want to encourage people to be part of is this ongoing one every week to pray for the appointment of a new vicar for the parish here. The process will take some time. That certainly the wheels have started to turn and uh, our prayers for that on a regular basis are crucial. So please, if you feel you can join in from time to time, there is a meeting that takes place just in the uh, side vestry over here at 10.30 on Sunday mornings. Um, now, have we got a slide now for the... Yes, we do. Uh, Nicole is uh, coordinating this, and Nicole is... Um, no, she's not in the building, is she, at the moment? If she were, she'd be doing this announcement. Nicole is um, on um, um, children's activities this morning, Sunday Club. So she's pretty occupied. And by the way, just in mentioning that, Lizzie is unwell again today. She said uh, she and the whole family are just uh, unwell. Um, she said they've tested negative, um, which means at this stage it's not COVID. But whatever it is, they're not feeling great. So please pray for Lizzie and the rest of the family um, as they recover quickly. But Nicole's asked me just to uh, run these notices over to you this morning that the um, mission dinner, which is normally held every year, but after two years, it's on again. It's back, and this um, one's coming up on the 3rd of September. So please come along on the evening and get involved in the fun. There'll be a silent auction. There'll be items there which will be uh, from all sorts of sources, and a live auction as well. There'll be some games and some Japanese-themed entertainment. Now, I have no idea what that might be, but you will find out, as I will, when you come on the 3rd of September. As you're aware, uh, Matt and Bex Ui are coming to speak to us about their upcoming mission to Japan through CMS. You'll have the opportunity to bid on live auction items and in the silent auction throughout the evening. The items that will be offered include goods such as, now here we go, beauty care packages. I could do with one of those. Wines, crafts, or a service such as babysitting, providing catering for a party, hosting a dinner-themed party. And please let us know what else you might have to auction. So there's some interesting options here. I don't know who's doing all these things, but they sound rather good. You may also wish to sponsor one or more of the mission partners and their families to attend the evening. Uh, so feel free to get in touch with any of the mission partners and purchase them a ticket through the Tribe Booking site. So now, is that Tribe Booking site up and running? You, you, not yet. Okay. Next week. Right. So there'll be, um, uh, there'll be more information coming. And, and Nicole said she's happy to fill in more information for anyone who wants to talk with her personally after the service. In terms of helping on the nights, still looking for volunteers, 
with child safety to assist with the child minding on the night and help us from 5 p.m. onwards on the night uh, for setting up and cleaning up and things like that. So if you'd like to help out and be part of the team there, please, please uh, let Nicole know. So, so please purchase a ticket this week when the Try Booking link is sent around. Send it in and send it on to as many friends as you can to encourage it. And <clears throat> the dinner will be held in the hall. As well as that, let uh, Nicole or Kelly Elmer know what you'll be providing for the auction items. The more people and the more items we have, then we can raise our budgeted amount of $10,000 for our mission support. So there's a fun evening planned for a few weeks' time. It's not that far away, 3rd of September. So I hope that's in your diaries and uh, you're boned up on that. One other quick item. At the back of the church this morning is a, is a large card, and it's a birthday card that um, is going to be passed on to Rita Coulter. Now, <clears throat> many of you, um, I'm sure, will know Rita and her husband, and Rita turns 100 on Wednesday. Oh, yeah. And her husband turns 100 uh, in October, I think it is. Sorry? 9th of October. There you go. Now, they've been close friends and together since their teens. Um, her husband was uh, decorated by the French during the Second World War or following the Second World War, so they have quite a history. Um, and they live just up the road in, at Headley Sutton. So Rita turns 100 on Wednesday and there's a card there which uh, Fiona's organised today. So if you would like to write a message in that, uh, please do so after the service. It's on the table at the back. Uh, I think that's all I needed to say except to encourage us all by saying that we are the people of God. And I know we get to say that um, in the service sometimes, and you respond by saying, His Spirit is with us. And I want to reinforce that truth this morning. You've come together this morning because you belong to Jesus. You've come together to join with fellow believers this morning. When you look around here, they're a bit like family in a way. Um, <clears throat> you didn't choose your brothers and sisters or your parents or your family. I'm not sure what I would have done if I had a chance to choose mine. But uh, I didn't choose the family of God either. <clears throat> but God the Father chose me. And God the Father chose you. And we, his family, are together this morning here. So let's use these opportunities week by week to celebrate being his family. To support one another just by coming together, being together. Encouraging one another with our, with this, with our love and friendship and worshipping together regularly. It's such a great thing for God's people to do. And I'm glad you're all here, and I'm here with you today. So God bless you. Part of being God's family is acknowledging that we are not perfect in his sight. So let's come to a time of confession. Please join me in the prayer. Merciful God, and our judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved you as ourselves. We repent and sorry for our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in unity and purpose. Through Jesus Christ. Hear these great words of assurance. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. For those, for as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. Amen. Communion time, Trevor, you're back up. So before the children go out to Sunday Club today, we're going to share in communion together. And uh, I hope that you've all been able to get a, a communion kit and are ready to go. If not, um, 
There's, they're up the back and someone may even bring a few around. So as we go through this together, you'll see the, um, the, the lines and the responses on the screen. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is always right to give you thanks, God our Creator, loving and faithful, holy and strong. You made us and the whole universe and filled your world with life. You sent your Son to live among us, Jesus our Saviour, Mary's child. He suffered on the cross. He died to save us from our sins. He rose in glory from the dead. You send your Spirit to bring new life to the world and clothe us with power from on high. And so we join the angels to celebrate and say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Father, on the night before he died, Jesus shared a meal with his friends. He took the bread and thanked you. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the meal, Jesus took the cup of wine. He thanked you and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, the new promise of God's unfailing love. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus Christ has died. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is risen. Jesus Christ will come again. So let's now prepare ourselves to share in this meal together. Remembering that on the night that Jesus shared with his disciples, they were sharing a meal that was traditional, annual gathering at the Passover, to look back and remember their deliverance as a nation from Egypt many hundreds of years before. And they ate that meal, looking back and remembering that. And Jesus said, from now on, when you eat in this way, think of him, remember me, do this in remembrance. And so we do this morning. Now, let's take the bread. And eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you and be thankful. Now open the cup. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you and be thankful. so we say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And now Sunday Club starts, so if the children would like to leave and go with those responsible for them, that will happen over in the hall. And then we're going to greet one another. Just mingle momentarily and then I'm going to call you to sing again.
no other name. There is no other name in heaven can be found through whom we are redeemed, through whom your grace abounds. No other name can save but Jesus Christ our Lord. as we prepare to hear uh, from the Bible this morning. Lord, thank you that you reveal yourself to us through your word. We ask that your spirit be with us as we hear it. We pray, David, teach us truly and faithfully. Change our hearts and minds, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first reading is from Hebrews, the first chapter, beginning at verse 5, on page 971 in the Pew Bible. To which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you? Or again, Will I be his father and he will be my son? And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. Of the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds and his servants flames of fire. But of the Son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever, and the righteous scepter is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. And in the beginning, Lord, you founded the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands. <clears throat> they will perish, but you remain. 
They will all wear out like clothing. Like a cloak, you will roll them up. And like clothing, they will be changed. But you are the same. And your years will never end. But to which of the angels has he ever said, <clears throat> Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Are not all angels spirits in the divine service, sent to serve for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation? This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading comes from the book of Mark, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12, page 813 in the Bibles, if you're following it on. When he returned to Capernaum, after some days, it was reported that he was home. So many gathered around, excuse me, sorry, so many gathered around that there was no, so many gathered around that there was no longer room for them, not even in the front door. And he was speaking the word to them. And then some people came, bringing him a paralysed man, carried by four of them. When they couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And having dug through it, they let down the mat on which the paralytic lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now, some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts, why does this fellow speak in this way? It's blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? At once, Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions amongst themselves. And he said to them, why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic? Your sins are forgiven? Or to say, stand up, take your mat and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, stand up, take your mat and go to your home. And he stood up and immediately took the mat and went out before all of them so that they were amazed and glorified God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. This is the word of the Lord. Uh, good morning. Wonderful to see you. My name's uh, Dave Shannon. I have the privilege of being one of the ministers here. A special warm welcome to those who are here for the first uh, time. Uh, when I... Uh, read uh, the Bible for myself, I like to read a little bit of Psalm 119, uh, which is all about God's Word. And I've been stumped by this passage before us, this verse before us, and so I thought I'd start with that and then that could lead me into my prayer uh, for us this morning. I rejoice in following your statutes as one rejoices in great riches. Oh, what a challenging verse to hear, that we would rejoice in following God's word, that we would rejoice in being, following what his word says, just like we would if we struck it rich. Let's pray. Father, we do pray that you would help us rejoice in following your word, following your way, seeking to live our lives in obedience to your word. Father, please help us do that. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, what is the greatest problem you face? Maybe it's that mass equation you have never been able to solve. Maybe it's that Rubik's Cube that you got many, many, many years ago that has been collecting dust on your shelf ever since. Maybe it's running out of toilet paper and realising too late. But seriously, maybe the greatest problems are the rising interest rates, people unable to make repayments, declining super portfolios, uh, building and shipment delays. Maybe it's overwork leading to burnout or underwork, no work. Maybe it is 
uh, climate change, maybe it's a waste issue, maybe it is warfare that takes place around the world, maybe it is the threat of neighbouring nations, or maybe it's sickness, COVID, the flu, RSV, isolation. Quick shout out to those at home watching, thank you for staying at home, isolating away from us uh, this morning. But maybe it's other sicknesses, cancer, heart disease or a stroke. And while there are many uh, problems we can face in life, and they really do impact our lives and cause us great pain, great heartache, great sorrow, Jesus shows us that we have a greater problem. And it actually might surprise you. Uh, We started a series in Mark's Gospel uh, recently, a couple of weeks back, and so here is, uh, but we've had a couple of weeks break, so here is the story uh, so far. We see in the opening verse that this book is about Jesus. He is good news and he is the king, the promised king who would come. And as he begins his public ministry, he is there uh, preaching, proclaiming the good news because that is why he has come. We see that again and again. And he's done some pretty incredible, amazing things. He's, he's cast out demons. He's healed people from the, from the brink of death. And as you'd imagine, as people did pretty amazing, if, if someone did this pretty amazing thing, people flocked to him. Huge crowds went to him. But that's not why he came. He did not come to heal and cast out demons. That's not why he came. He came to teach, to proclaim the kingdom of God. Well, he heals a man of leprosy. And Jesus says, hey, keep it to yourself. Don't tell anyone. But of course, he can't. He's free. Instead of being banished away from others, he tells everyone he's free. And so as a result, huge, huge, huge crowds flock to him And so Jesus can't go openly into town anymore. It makes me think of like the Beatles, you know, when the Beatles came to town and hundreds of screaming, adoring fans would come and flock to them, hoping to get a piece of the action. Uh, Well, that is the same for Jesus. Here is Jesus having to move out into the countryside, open wide spaces so that everyone from everywhere can come out to him. And this now brings us to Mark chapter 2. And it should come as quite a surprise. Have a look there, uh, if you've got it in front of you, from verse 1. When he returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. So many gathered around that there was no longer room for them, not even in front of the door. And he was speaking the word to them. You see, Jesus has returned from his country preaching tour and and is back in Capernaum at at Peter's place, most likely, the disciple. And and word has gone out, oh, Jesus is back, Jesus is back. And so huge, huge numbers of people flock to him to listen, to listen to him teaching. And that is when, verse 3, have a look again. Then some people came, bringing to him a paralysed man, carried by four of them. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him, and having dug through it, they let down the mat on which the paralytic lay. Now, four men carry their friend in to see Jesus, and the crowd is huge. They're not even getting through the front door. It reminds me of Buddy Franklin. Uh, Earlier this season, he kicked his 1,000th goal. Now, that's a really rare feat in footy that someone kicks that many goals. But when it happens, the crowd empties from the stadium and rushes onto the ground. Heaps of people wanting to get a piece of the action. Touch, buddy. Hey, congratulations. You did it. Woo! And while some want to congratulate him, others, I don't know if you saw the news, wanted to dump ashes onto the SCG. Others just wanted to do kick to kick. Anyway, with so many people on the field, all surrounded by Buddy, all surrounding Buddy, he couldn't actually go anywhere. He couldn't move. He was surrounded. Even though security wanted to get into him and help him and get him out, they couldn't. He, he was trapped. He was on his own. And in fact, it took 10 minutes, 10 minutes for him to push and pull and really work hard to make his way through this crowd. 
Well, the crowd here listening to Jesus is massive. And there is no way that these friends are going to be able to take their mate into Jesus. So they head to the roof. And the roof was like an extension of one's house. Think of a a patio. They would have used it uh, quite regularly. And it was and it was common for the roof uh, to be opened up. You see, the door, door frames were quite narrow, and so if you wanted to, to bring in some furniture, you might open up your roof and, and drop stuff through. And so coming through the roof wasn't that strange. Uh, the roof was probably replaced uh, once a year. And whilst it was common to open the roof, it's not that common to do it when the house is packed full of people. Because you, as you dig through and open up the, the, the roof, you know, debris and, and dirt and leaves and the like would have fallen down on top of those inside. But here is the surprise. Have a look there from verse 5. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. You see, here is a man who cannot walk. He's a paralytic. He's been carried in by these men. And while Jesus has healed countless people before him, all he has to do is say the word and he would be healed. But surprisingly, that's not what he does. He says, your sins are forgiven. And just imagine you're this guy. Or or you're one of the the four friends carrying him in. Maybe it's a bit like that Christmas present you get from that relative who gives you undies and socks again, and you're like, oh, thanks for the gift. Maybe that's kind of what's going on through their friends. Thanks for forgiving my sins, but Jesus, come on, I I can't walk. But you see, what Jesus is doing here, he's showing us two things. He's telling us something about us and he's telling us something about himself, about Jesus. Let's start with what he tells us about us. You see, before Jesus is a man who who is unable to work, uh, walk. In in those days, there's no Centrelink, there's no social services. He's left to fend for himself. He needs to beg. And as an adult, instead of him caring and, and caring and looking after his parents, well, he is on his own. It is a desperate, difficult situation. You see, he's got a great problem, a great need. He can't walk, he can't work, he can't look after, and so he needs to be looked after by others. And Jesus says to this man, Your sins are forgiven. Jesus could have healed the man, Uh, he's done that in the past and he certainly does it in the end, but he chooses not to do so just yet. Why not? You see, Jesus wants us to see the greater problem, something far more bigger, more important than an ability to walk or not. You see, no matter how great a problem we may face in life, Jesus sees a greater problem. Jesus tells us no matter what we face, that deep, personal, difficult situation we find ourselves in, we have a far greater, deeper problem, a greater spiritual problem, sin. You see, forgiveness from sin is more important than walking. Can you believe it? And more important than marriage, paying off that mortgage, getting a job, travelling the world. You see, we need forgiveness of sin and this is why Jesus uh, tells us about it. Because we can't have a relationship with God because of our sin. Sin is a rebellion against God, an attitude towards God where we say we'll live our own lives, thank you very much. But you see, God made the world and everything in it, including us. And so we are meant to give him the honour and respect he deserves as, as the maker. And yet we reject God. We reject his words and his direction for our lives. We're pretty happy to put God in a pretty 
happy box over here. We domesticate him and make him suit our needs as we continue to live for ourselves rather than living for him. But you see, that is sin. And we see it in the world around us, do we not? We live in a broken and and fallen world. There is much good that does take place in this world. There is some good, but there is so much bad. Just just flick through your news feed and you see it. Sexual assault is on the rise. Corruption, exhortation, uh, extortion, war, murder, abuse. There is so much mess. And it all stems back to sin, a rejection of God. And we saw this a couple of weeks ago, that as a result, well, we deserve God's righteous judgment. You see, back to this man, what is the point in healing this man to give him another 30, 50 years if his greatest problem, sin, is not dealt with? And it's like someone saying, oh, I've got this splinter in my eye. Do you mind just getting the splinter out for me? Meanwhile, he's got a massive head wound, blood gushing out of his head. You see, sin is our greater problem, our greatest problem. And it affects each one of us here. Everyone in the world, in fact. And you see, here is the surprising thing before us uh, this morning is because when we see someone who can't walk, we are moved to pity. We are are sad. We think, man, that is a great problem. They cannot walk. But not Jesus. He sees this man and offers to forgive his sins because he can. And while he doesn't explain how he forgives sin, that will be explained later as we continue to work our way through Mark's gospel, but it is Easter where we see how he forgives sins through his death and resurrection. But just at this particular point, we see the hope that Jesus offers for the forgiveness of sin, our greatest need dealt with. You see, how do we see people? Do we see people like Jesus does? Spiritually dead, in need of forgiveness? Or do we see their hearing aids, their their cane, their chairs, whatever other kind of uh, disability or what there is, and seek to address that? You see, Jesus tells us that our greatest need, it is forgiveness. But he also tells us about himself, about Jesus. Uh, Jesus says uh, that your sins are forgiven And straight away, those who are there listening on, they get the significance of what he's saying straight away. Have a look there from verse 6. Now, some of the scribes were sitting there, questioning in their hearts, why does this fellow speak in this way? It is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? You see, these scribes, these experts in the law, they actually get it right. They're right to say only God can forgive sins and so they're actually outraged because they know that sin is against God. I may sin against you, but as I do, I sin against God and as I sin against God, only God can forgive. It's like me grabbing Trevor's guitar here. I'm not going to do this, total hypothetical, but if I grab uh, Trevor's guitar and I pretend that I was some rock and roll superhero, smashed it to the ground, threw it out, and it was just this, oh, it would be, no, I'm not going to do it, hypothetical situation. But if I destroyed his guitar, and then Gordon jumps up and says, oh, I forgive you, man, it's all good, it's all good. Uh, I know you didn't mean it, but, but, I, but I forgive you. How wrong would that be? I haven't destroyed uh, Gordon's guitar. It's Trev. Trev is the one who I have hurt and gone against. He is the one that needs to say, I'm sorry. Uh, I need to say that, but he needs to say, I, I forgive you. Because only he who has been wronged can forgive. And so the scribes here are actually right in saying, only God can forgive sin. But then Jesus shows us something about himself here. 
that he is the one who can forgive sin. Have a look there from verse 8. At once Jesus perceived in his spirit uh, that they were discussing these questions within themselves. And he said to them, why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Let me ask you, how would you feel if you were in the presence of someone else and they knew exactly what you were thinking? Oh boy, how scary that would be. Anyway, Jesus continues, verse 9. Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, stand up, take your mat and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, stand up, take your mat and go to your home. Jesus asks, which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, stand up? And of course, it is easier to say, your sins are forgiven. Because how would we know? How would we be able to check to see that forgiveness has actually taken place? Well, we actually can't. And so really, it is much easier to say, your sins are forgiven. And so this is their issue with Jesus. How dare he say this? But while it is much easier to say your sins are forgiven, it is certainly much harder to do. You see, Jesus must die, willingly die, to forgive sin. And so it is much easier for him, the God of the universe, to heal the man. And so, to show his authority to forgive sin, to show that he is God in the flesh, he heals this man. And the man, he shows great faith by listening to Jesus and doing what he says. He stands up and and walks out before them all. And verse 12, have a look there. The crowd were amazed. They're astounded. They glorified. They praised God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. You see, Jesus shows us something about himself here. He is God in the flesh. He can forgive sin. You see, he does what is harder to say and do to make the man well and to to be healed, but I guess not when you are God. You see, not when you can create things by speaking. These first couple of chapters are really showing us the identity of Jesus. Who is Jesus? Well, he is God's chosen king, the promised one to come, who is God in the flesh. And so how we respond to Jesus matters. We can either believe and trust him or we can reject him. We can see him as God in the flesh, one who can forgive sin, or we can reject him, deny him, think of him as a blasphemer as they did. But you see, we we cannot ignore someone who claims to be God in the flesh. Either he is a liar, a blasphemer, one who speaks against God, or he is speaking the truth. And so the right response is to worship him. Jesus tells us something about ourselves here. We have a great need, the greatest need, the forgiveness of sin. And he tells us about Jesus. Only he can forgive sin. Mark 2 shows us the importance of forgiveness, our greatest need. And if you are an unbeliever among us today, you haven't put your faith, you don't yet quite trust Jesus then please understand this is your greatest problem, your greatest need. And it needs your urgent attention. We've seen this man, he could not walk, and that is pretty bad. Can it get much worse than that, we may think? But Jesus says, well, that is nothing. There is a far greater need, a greater problem, a forgiveness problem, And only Jesus can deal with it. Will you recognise your need for forgiveness and come to Jesus who offers to forgive? 
And if you are forgiven, you have put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus. Remind yourselves afresh that forgiveness is your friends, your neighbours, your colleagues, your family's greatest need to. Remind yourselves that their greatest need is the forgiveness of sin. I reckon we can become blind to the actual needs of others and address the easy things that will be applauded by the world, like supporting charities that care for the physical needs of others. And while these are good things to do, let's not get blinded by their physical needs and see their greater spiritual need, the forgiveness of sin. Let's not get distracted by doing these things alone. Let's also do the hard thing, the things that won't get applauded by the world around us, well, that will actually probably lead to persecution. And to speak to our friends about their need for forgiveness and support those ministries that seek to speak of these things too. How do we see people sick, injured, in need of physical help, rich, successful, powerful, popular, got it all together? Or do we see people like Jesus does? See their greatest need, their need of forgiveness. Jesus shows us our greatest problem, our greatest need, and it is the forgiveness of sin. And only Jesus offers and shows us he can forgive. Will you pray with me? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for our Lord Jesus. We thank you that he offers the hope of forgiveness and actually offers true forgiveness when we put our faith and trust in him. Thank you that he deals with our sin, that we can be in right relationship with you. Father, help us have the eyes of Jesus in the world around us, to not be blind to the spiritual needs and the greatest needs of those around us who don't yet know Jesus. And that we would seek to speak, to use our words and our actions to see them know this Jesus too, who loves us and forgives us when we put our faith and trust in him. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us continue in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you so loved the world that you sent us Jesus, your Son, so that if we believe in him, we will not perish but have everlasting life. Please help us to honour him, not only with our lips but with our lives, by seeking his will and obeying him as best we can. May our lives express his love in all that we say and do. Let us pray for peace between nations and peace within nations. Almighty God, from whom all thoughts of truth and peace proceed, kindle, we pray, in the hearts of all people the true love of peace, and guide with your pure and peaceable wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquility your kingdom may go forward till the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love. Let us pray for our Commonwealth Government. Lord God, we ask you to bless the ministers of our federal government as they wrestle with the major problems facing our country. 
problems to do with education and health, our economy and defence, our international relations and our environment. Give our ministers wisdom, we pray, and a heart for the safety and well-being of the people they serve. And please help their staff to support them conscientiously for the good of our nation. Lord, we pray that you will bless your church throughout the world. Continue to inspire our bishops and clergy as they bring your word to us. Please encourage our missionaries as they teach people of other cultures about the love of Jesus and as they urge people to commit themselves to following him. And may your Holy Spirit be with our own ministers, Trevor, Fiona and David, as they lead us in worship and pastor those of us in need. Now here is a prayer that the diocese will appoint a new vicar for us after God's own heart. Lord God, you are our eternal shepherd and guide. In your mercy, grant our church a shepherd after your own heart, who will walk in your ways and with loving care watch over your people, that your name may be glorified. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let us pray for those in need. Dear Lord, our Good Shepherd, please restore the sick to health. Give the weary rest. Feed the hungry. Soothe the suffering. Comfort the lonely and those who are grieving. Please show each of us how we can help people in need so that we can be instruments of your grace. Finally, let us pray that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit will be with us all now and forever. Amen. Let's stand and uh, complete our worship singing time by joining in this uh, magnificent hymn based on Psalm 46, God is our strength and refuge.
offerings this morning um, and the ones made online as well. We pray that they are put to good use to further your kingdom here in St Mark's, in our Camberwell community and your world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please take a seat. We come to the end of our service this morning, but there will be hot tea and coffee in the hall um, afterwards where we can uh, catch up with each other and enjoy some good conversation. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.